let's go with the first question. The first question, November 2017, uh, paper one, question five. So this was an unusual question about uh, correlation and regression in that it didn't give you data um, that you uh, were asked to enter on your calculator and use your calculator. Um, there's a lot of data points on that graph. And my first instinct when I looked at it was, wow, that's a lot of data to enter. Do they really expect me to do that in an exam? Uh, and the answer is no, they don't expect me to do that in an exam. Um, what they expect is me to use my knowledge to be able to um, figure out how to do it without entering all those data. Um, so the survey was carried out to investigate the relationship between a person's age and years on the horizontal axis and the number of hours they watch television per week on the vertical axis. And the scatter diagram shows, uh, the, scatter diagram shows the results of those, um, that, that survey. So all those dots relate to one particular person. You can see how old they are by looking, at, looking down to the horizontal axis. You can see how many hours of, they spent watching television looking across the vertical axis. So um, it says the mean age of people surveyed was 50. For these results, the equation of the regression line um, H on A is H equals 0. Um, 0.22a plus 15. The regression line h on a is just the mathematically correct way of saying the regression line that calculates h based on a. It calculates the number of hours based on the age. You can have regression lines that go the other way and they're not exactly the same. So um, find the mean number of hours. Well the key point here they're testing is do you know that the mean is on the regression line? The mean value must lie on the regression line. Uh, sorry, I've got a slight issue here with my pen not working for some reason. Ah, oh, there we go. It did work. Just up there. Okay. Let's get rid of that. Whoops. Okay. I might have to leave that on there if I can't. Uh, can't find a way to erase that. There we go. All right. And we'll go back to the pen. Okay. So the mean, so for part A, you need to know is that the mean point X bar, Y bar, um, or in this case, um, A bar, H bar, because our variables are A and H, is on the regression line. The, me the regression line always goes through the mean, so you're going to use that fact to answer part A. So we know that H bar is 0 0.22 times A bar, plus 15. So that's the key point. It tells you what um, the mean age is, it tells you there it's 50, so you're using that 50 to work out the mean number of hours of television. Um, draw the regression line on the scatter diagram. Well, it gives you the equation. The two marks are for these two things. Um, it must go through the mean. That's one mark. And the second mark is the um, y-intercept must be correct. And the y-intercept is 15 because we know that. So that's what, that's what they'll be looking at when they mark it. They'll be looking at the graph and say, does it go through that point, that point there? And does it go through 50 whatever, um, whatever the, the mean point is, it's somewhere up here. Um, does it go through that mean point somewhere up here? Um, and that's where you'll get your two marks. The, the examiners will have an overlay that they'll put on top of your graph and check that it goes through those points within maybe a millimeter of tolerance either way. Okay. Uh, question C is a correlation. It's a, can you identify correlation visually? Can you look at that and say what type of correlation that is? I'm not going to give you the answer for that. It's only one mark. Um, but you should know that positive correlation generally slopes upwards. Negative correlation generally slopes downwards. No correlation is the points are dotted all over the place. There's no pattern, okay? And that's what you should know, and you need to make a judgment call on that. Okay, okay. and then uh, this, this person here is 18 years old. Give a reason why the regression line should not be used to estimate the number of hours this person watches television per week. Well, the conditions to be able to use a regression line are the following. There are three. You must have strong correlation. If you don't have strong correlation, you can't use the regression line. The example I sometimes give on that is if you were to miss one of your exams and I said, okay, you've missed the exam. Um, I'll give you a grade. Um, I'll give you a grade based on how tall you are. 
Um, well, your height and your uh, test scores probably don't correlate very careful, very closely. So using your height to estimate your test score wouldn't be a fair thing to do because they're not well correlated. And I hope you appreciate that that wouldn't be a fair thing to do. Um, so we can't use that. So we have to have something that's well correlated with our model to be able to get an accurate prediction. If it's not well correlated, it's not going to give you a good prediction. That's the first thing. The second thing is um, you must use what we call interpolation. Okay, and interpolation is that the value we're putting into the model is within the values that we've used to build the model. So the, the youngest age we've got here is about 25 and the oldest person here is about 75. So interpolation means that we've got to be between 25 and 75 years old in this graph. Um, that's the basis that we use the the model, um, the, the model is based on data from the age, people aged 25 to 75, so we can only trust the model um, in as far as we can trust it for ages in that interval. Um, an example of why that might not work, um, those of you who are aware of what happens with um, young children when, when people have babies, they're often um, weighed every so often and their weight is marked on a chart so that the uh, medical teams can see whether the baby is developing at a healthy weight um, and there's a model that tells us how much a baby should weigh based on how many months old it is and that applies for the first um, six months or a year or so maybe two years even of a baby's life now we don't carry that model on into adult life because obviously a baby is growing with each extra year. The baby is growing by, you know, it's increasing weight by a few kilograms. We don't carry that on into adult life. We don't keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger by two or three kilograms every year until we become absolutely huge. So that model for working out babies' uh, weights based on age only works for a certain set of ages. It stops it. It just, it's nonsense after that. Um, so that's, that's why we have to use interpolation. And the third condition is um, must use correct input and output. Um, what I mean by that is that you have to use the model is the H on A regression line. That means the model is used to predict H based on A. You shouldn't use this model the other way round. I said there was another regression line that is the A on H regression line. Um, that's used to predict A based on H. So we should only use this model to predict it that way round. So it says give a reason why the regression line should not be used to estimate. You need to choose one of those three. Those are the three. This is an increasingly common type of question on the paper now to ask you about the reliability of regression lines. In this case, they're just asking for one mark. They're just looking for one reason. Often they'll look for two marks. They'll look for two reasons why it can't be done. Okay, so uh, I'll leave that question there. I'm going to stop the recording on that and